السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. This is Abdurrahman Mohammed from Group One. Uh, today I'm going to introduce you to one of the applications of electromagnetic field, which is microwave transmission. So first, what is that microwave transmission? Microwaves are a form of electromagnetic radiation with wavelengths ranging from one meter to one millimeter, and frequencies are lies between 300 megahertz to 300 gigahertz. So as you can see here in this. Uh, uh, graph. Uh, this is the presentation of a microwave wave. So here, uh, this uh, wave represents the electrical field, and this wave represents a magnetic field. So it's a combination between magnetic and electric field. Microwave transmission is the tra is the transmission of information, voice data, television, telephony, or radio signals by microwave radio waves. Microwaves are widely used from point-to-point -point communication because of their small wavelengths allow conveniently sized antennas to direct them in narrow beams which can be directly pointed at the receiving antennas. So, uh, as you can here, see here, uh, it contains two uh, microwave lengths from here to here and from here to here. And uh, the line supports appro approximately about 30 miles. This is the line of sight. Microwave link hub or hub. The, the connection of two uh, microwave sites via line of sight, right? it's called hub. Also, it's called hub. So, as you can see here in this presentation, the signal transferred from, uh, from here to here. Microwave key parameters. We have hertz. It's a measurement of signal electro electromagnetic frequency expressed as the number of cycles per second. And we have frequency, which is the rate of the wave's oscillation measured in hertz. Third, we have amplitude, the strength of or power level of the waves. Fourth, we have phase, which is the particular point in the cycle of the wave for measured in degrees. And the last one is polarization, is the orientation of the electrical field driving the wave. Hello, it's me, Ammar Hadwan, and what are the fundamental components for sending and receiving uh, microwave signals? The first one is the transmitter and receiver, and the second one is the guided cable for uh, receiving cable or, or transmitted cable, and the third one is the transient antenna and receiver antenna, as you can see here in this graph. And what is the microwave applications? The applications for microwave is the AC electricity transmission, the submarine communication, long wave radiation, uh, radio broadcast, AM radio broadcast, FM broadcast, and short wave radio. Moving to antenna. What are antennas? Antennas are devices that radiate or receive electromagnetic wave of certain frequencies. The antenna is a transition structure between a guided structure and the open air. An antenna designed to radiate and receive microwave frequencies, therefore, it's called microwave antennas. The shape of antenna. The size of antenna's dish is a key part of its design, function, and role within the network. Bigger antenna's dishes produce greater power, but they are more difficult to install and introduce limitations. Regarding tower space, tower loading, leasing cost, and local zooming regulation, even though propolic. Difference between fluctuating and radiating electromagnetic field. We have an electrical signal, so how do we convert it to electromagnetic wave? You might have a simple answer in your mind. This is to use a closed conductor. And with the help of the principle of electromagnetic, uh, electromagnetic induction, you will be able to produce a fluctuating magnetic field and an electrical field around it as shown here in this graph. However, this fluctuating field around the source is of no use in transmitting signal. The electromagnetic field here doesn't propagate. And instead, it's just fluctuating around the source. In an antenna, the electromagnetic wave needs to be separated from the source and they should propagate, as shown here in the second figure. Before looking at how the antenna is made, let's understand the physical behind of the uh, wave separation. Physical behind oscillating dipole and radiation. Consider one positive and one negative charge placed a distance apart. This arrangement is known as a dipole, and they obviously produce an electrical field here, as you can show here in this graph. Now assume that these charges are oscillating like this one in this graph, the second one, and the midpoint here of the path, the velocity will be at the maximum and the end 
of their path, the velocity will be zero and the charge particularly undergo continuous acceleration and the acceleration due to the velocity variation. The properties of microwave length. Microwaves are the waves that radiate electromagnetic energy with a shorter wave length. Microwaves are not reflected by lone sphere. Microwaves travel in a straight line and are reflected by the conducting surface. Microwaves are easily attenuated within shorter distance. And also, finally, microwave currents can flow through a thin layer of cable. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Abdullah Taha. And I will talk about fading. Uh, so fading basically is a loss in signal strength across a link caused by atmospheric disturbance like rain or snow that can scatter microwave signals. The lower frequency microwave bands over the greatest possible distance. And it's uh, theoretically allowing for links in excess of 50 km. So this is the normal signal, and if there is any fading issues, uh, the signal starts carrying, so we will get a friction path. Atmospheric challenge. Fog and heavy rain generally causes negligible loss in microwave links, where air temperature has little impact on microwave links. Radium or protective cover. Snow and ice can easily gathered on exposed antenna structure, therefore the total weight of the antennas and equip equipment would be higher. Antennas can be fitted with protective covers or radomes as we see in this figure, and that's prevent the build up of snow and ice in front of the antenna while also reducing its wind load. Radomes are particularly useful for large uh, microwave antennas that are already heavy. Assalamu alaikum, this is Abdurrahman Ali from Group 1. Uh, we, as we can see, we have the microwave transmission, transmission frequency and its applications. The application, there is the underwater communication. We take it, for example, the underwater communication that has wavelength between 10,000 up to 100,000 km and frequency range between 3 to 30 hertz. And there is also the AM radio. The EM radio wavelength is between 1 to 10 km and frequency range between 30 up to 300 kilohertz but on the other hand the FM radio the FM radio wavelength is quite different because it's from 1 to 10 meter and a frequency range of 30 up to 300 millihertz and there is the common common applications that most know uh, such as television mobile phone GPS that has wavelength uh, between 10 up to 100 centimeter and frequency range from 300 up to 3000 millihertz. Low and high frequency. Low high frequency. The low frequency uh, microwave bands offer the greatest possible distance. Why does it offer the uh, possible the greatest possible distance? Because in telecommunication, the frequency and distance are inversely proportional to each other which means in a high frequency you will have less distance but in a low frequency you will be having higher distance adaptive transmit power control or ATPC the ATPC dynamically adjusts power level to compensate for any link adaptance uh, adaptive modulation adaptive, modula adaptive modulation is used to dynamically switch modulation scams according to the prevailing channel conditions uh, there is different typical modulation scams that selected for the adaptive modulations, which are 4 com, 16 com, 64 com, 128 com, 256 com, and 512 com, and 10, 24 com. And the, let's take the adapt, adaptive modulation. The adaptive modulation, as we can see here in the sunny day, uh, the link can send up to 1024 com but in a rainy day the link can send up to 256 com and a storm days it can send only up to 4 com thank you so much this is the end of our presentation for group one